Hi, Mitch Winger back with another video on data analytics and machine learning. In this video, we'll discuss profit curves. Hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. We now know how to calculate EV, and we also know how to rank instances in our model and then create a series of confusion matrices. We can use this approach to create several visualizations that illustrate the effect of using various thresholds on our performance. We'll look at the profit curve first. The x-axis of our profit curve contains our threshold values, typically expressed as the percentage of instances targeted. At each threshold, as you recall, we can calculate a confusion matrix, and therefore an expected value. Even though we call it a curve, it's really a plot of points that we typically connect with a line for visual smoothing purposes. Let's say we have a situation where we will make a $9 sale, but our offer costs $5 to market. We can create the cost benefit matrix you see here. If we have 1,000 consumers in our training data set, we may decide to build three potential classifiers to see how they perform. For classifier one, we calculate the confusion matrix and EV for every threshold from zero to 100% of all consumers, and then plot it on a graph space, like so. We can then repeat the process with classifier two, then classifier three. The blue line represents a random selection process. As you can see, all three classifiers and the random selection line all begin at the same place and end at the same place. This makes sense because at those two points, you either don't send any offers and don't get any profit, or you send everyone an offer, in which case the model doesn't really matter. In between, you can see quite a bit of variation in performance between the models. So how do you know which model to choose? Well, if our goal is to maximize profit, which classifier should we use? And how much of the population should we target? As you can see, classifier two maximizes all potential profit at a little more than 50% of the population. Therefore, to maximize profit, we will score the entire population with classifier two and then send offers to the 50% with the highest scores. What if we have a limited budget? Let's say we have information on 100,000 potential customers, but management is only willing to commit $40,000 for the offers. That budget restriction will only allow us to target about 8% of the population. If we look at our curve at the X equals 8% mark, we see that classifier one performs best. We would then score all 100,000 potential consumers with classifier one, then send offers to the 8,000 with the highest scores. So as you can see here, adding a budgetary constraint by necessity changes the operating point for our performance analysis. And in this case, it also changes which classifier we use for the ranking process. Now, profit curves are extremely sensitive to the assumptions in your model. First, they're sensitive to your class priors. A small change in class distribution can result in significant changes to your profit curve. Second, they might be even more sensitive to cost benefit estimates. It's important to remember that good priors and good cost benefit estimates can be difficult to obtain in many domains. Fraud is one area in particular where this can be the case. We'll revisit the issue of sensitivity in an upcoming video. That's it for this discussion on profit curves. I hope you found it useful. As always, be sure to check out the other videos in this series.